other are externally independent and freestanding, um, I think it still kind of dispenses with uh, theological problems that are accompanied by calling a drug something that generates you know, divinity within, if you don't believe in divinity. It means God within, generating God within, and inside theos, uh, God and gen, gen, generate, so that which generates God inside a person. So, and, and it's a class of drugs, uh, formerly called psychedelic, but it's a way of sort of softening the, the um, bad press of the word psychedelic. And, and, and especially it's to separate it from sort of the party aspect of, of uh, taking a drug and going crazy or, uh, and showing that they, these drugs have a spiritual side to them, if you can find it. A term that I prefer is shamanic plant or shamanic medicine because it's a plant, a psychoactive plant, usually a, a psychedelic or a hallucinogen that is used in one of these shamanic traditions, right? So it's appropriate to call it a shamanic medicine, um, although the same, the very same plant and the very same substance could be not shamanic if you're not using it in a shamanic context. If you're using it recreationally or taking it in a rave or some other situation, it's not really a shamanic medicine anymore. It's still the same substance, but if you're talking about substances that are used specifically sort of in this shamanic context, then I like shamanic medicine. I have problems with the term entheogen, although I know that it's gotten you know, more popular. Uh, uh, after Carl Ruck, who was a classicist, and Jonathan Ott and some other people proposed it as an alternative to hallucinogen. Um, and theogen means uh, manifesting the God within, in theos, within and God. And that's fine, except they don't always do that. I don't like the word, um, because I'm a Buddhist, and I don't believe in gods, you know. So, you know, it's, to, to me, it's something which, it, um, which helps you to reach your full potential. It, you don't need to introduce the idea of God. I like the term, because I have turned very mystical you know, since taking LSD. And uh, so my outlook is more skewed in that direction. Um, I think that uh, what uh, Groff said was that it was a non-specific amplifier of your mental states, uh, the psychedelic or hallucinogen or uh, fantastica, you know, uh, the psychotomimetic, you know, all of these uh, qualities that have been ascribed to the same class of sacraments that we now refer to as entheogens, uh, I think it's closer for me to the ultimate purpose for which these substances can be used. Uh, the capacity for the human being to experience infinite love and total self-forgiveness. A sense of deep interconnectedness with the planet and with all people and with the cosmos. Uh, this uh, plasticity of our identity and, uh, and helping us to see into realms that um, perhaps are both ancient uh, because they're the archetypal divine imagination and they're ever fresh, you know, because it is transcendental presence that is the creator, the artist the uh, cosmic artist, you know. Entheogen, that means connecting with God. Um, I've been searching for God all my life. I was a practicing Catholic for many, many years. And you would think that psychedelics, you know, being mind manifesting, would show you the God you've been worshiping. The, the closest I ever got to God was that 
Hey, Nick, you're God. You're, you're an aspect of divinity that's looking out uh, at this, you know, a little spy for God. Um, and so enjoy it. I say, well, that's a twist. I've been looking for a God outside me. And here I, I learned that I'm one of God's um, apostles in a way. What a surprise. <laughs> so that's what I learned from psychedelics. That, that uh, at least that's a hypothesis. So pay attention, you know, it was the message. Pay attention, Nick, you're, you're, you're collecting data for God. Look, look, look with God's eyes upon the world. So the term hallucinogen is inaccurate, the term um, psychotomimetic is inaccurate, the term entheogen is, you know, it all depends on circumstances. My personal preference is I like psychedelic because even though the term carries all this cultural baggage, you know, and everything's psychedelic. Uh, and that's that's uh, kind of something left over from the 60s. But in the strict sense, psychedelic means mind manifesting. And I like the term because it leaves it open. I mean, these substances certainly manifest the mind in, in some aspect. And we don't have, you know, we don't have any argument with that. But how they manifest it. Uh, you know, it depends on the set and setting. And like these other terms, you know, sort of are more specifically related to set and setting. Uh, and, and they also show how difficult it is to really linguistically kind of put this in a box, you know, characterize what they do. You know, sometimes they're mystical, sometimes they're uh, Psych induce psychosis. Sometimes they don't do much of anything at all, you know. But but they always manifest the mind in some way. So I like psychedelic. If I could, if it could just be divorced from, you know, all the connotations that it's come to have in our culture. I think. Uh it's almost inevitable that uh, psychedelics have been playing a part in uh, religious, mystical experiences since the beginning of time. They are a powerful way for human beings to blow their little egos out of the water and contact the divine. I mean, one thing, you know, the whole of spirituality has its roots, ancient roots, in the shamanic traditions. Mm. We still have those traditions, yeah. and a, a huge number of them are based on whatever the indigenous psychedelic happens to be in that area. Mm. Because what could be more natural than you pick up a mushroom or something like that? You